After two months of no astrophotography, I've been meaning to shoot this target for a very long time. They call it the Horsehead Nebula, and I'm super excited to shoot this tonight because it has been forever since I've been out here. I've been meaning to shoot this for over a year now because I really want to improve on my shot from last year, so I'm hoping that that's the case this time around. I'm going to be talking about what this nebula really is in the night sky, where to find it, and some of the best ways for focusing, and of course I'm going to be revealing the image at the end of this video. But don't worry, this is not some ordinary video. We have somebody really special coming onto this video, and I'm super excited for him to be here for this because it's going to be a crazy night. Quite literally. Absolutely crazy. But more on that soon. My name is Tanner from AstroTan, and welcome to the YouTube channel if you're new. Okay, so who is this guy coming onto my YouTube channel? His name is Ryan, and his YouTube channel is Orion Astro, so I'd check it out. But basically, he's been my friend for a couple years, and he's here to do some astro photography with me tonight, and we're gonna be filming a YouTube video together, and it's gonna be some absolutely wild stuff tonight. So I'm super excited to get set up with him after all these months, because last time I saw him was at the Cherry Springs Star Party back in June, which was basically a giant gathering of hundreds of astro photographers and we all spent a couple nights camping under these stars in some really dark skies, Bortle 3 to be exact. But our schedules could never really make it work until around now, where we had a clear Saturday night, so I'm super excited for him to come here, and it's long overdue for another meetup. I'm not sure what he's shooting yet, but I'm sure he'll definitely reveal it during this video, so I'm excited to see what he has in store for us today. See, astrophotography is a very broad hobby in terms of age groups, but one thing that it's kind of missing are the the teenagers. There's not a lot of teenagers, but it's kind of hard to find groups of teenage astrophotographers nowadays. And me and Ryan met on Instagram, and even though it's not the best place to meet somebody because, you know, dangerous stuff, you know? We eventually met up for the first time, and it has been a whole journey ever since. So we've become best friends through this hobby, and it's been great. We share a lot of the common interests, like astrophotography, of course. We do appreciate photography and all that stuff like that, so some people even call us twins, but... So yeah, that's a little background on Ryan, and he said he's supposed to be here in an hour, so I don't know what I'm gonna do in the meantime, because... Well, just gotta wait for him, I guess. All right, well, I guess I'll catch up with you guys again when he gets here. All right, peace. All right, so it is currently 2.39, and I have no idea where this kid Ryan's at. He was supposed to be here like an hour ago. I'm thinking he might have gotten lost or something. I don't know, but I might have to text him because I don't know. It's it's weird because, you know, we planned this for... <laughs> This guy is struggling. He's on the struggle bus. I gotta lock it. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> You've seen my... <laughs> All right, so I finally decided to leave Ryan alone. He's he's doing his stuff now, so let's talk about what we're doing today. So the Horsehead Nebula, it's also called Barnard 33, and it is a emission nebula in the constellation of, you guessed it, Orion. Speaking of Ryan, Ryan is shooting the Tadpoles Nebula tonight and he'll talk about that in his video. In terms of Barnard 33, it is a really popular astrophotography target. I did it last year, but it was pretty bad to be honest. So this year I'm trying to change things and my goal for this target is to get a lot of the dark dust around it. That's a lot of the dark space dust to be specific. Right next to the Horsehead Nebula, you'll also see the Flame Nebula, which literally looks like fire. So it's pretty cool and it's a great name for it. What do you have to say to the, to the audience of millions I'm taking a picture of this. the tadpoles nebula tonight <laughs> <laughs> so today on astro tan <laughs> i'm taking a picture of the horse head nebula it's seven light years away from earth and it's red. So the Horsehead Nebula is located approximately 1,300 light years away, and it is a great winter astrophotography target if you're lucky and have the clear skies for it. I have not had any clear skies for the past two months, so I've only seen Orion about maybe a couple times, but nothing really to get an actual image of the Horsehead Nebula or really anything in it in general. To find this nebula, obviously look in the constellation of Orion and you will see Orion's belt. And when you look up to Orion's belt, you'll also see three stars in a almost perfect line. And the star to the left, the outermost left star, is that star, it's called Almatak, and that is the star that is right next to the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. So it fits the perfect view. You can also take a picture of the entire Orion constellation all together 
together if you really want to. There's a lot of crazy deep sky targets like the famous Orion Nebula, which I'm sure many of you guys have probably seen, the Witch Head Nebula, and even something called the Boogeyman Nebula is in there too, so pretty spooky. In terms of astrophotographers though, taking a picture of the Horsehead Nebula can be a little bit challenging, and it actually is because of that star, Elmatak. That star is pretty darn bright, and it poses a problem in post-processing, or basically meaning poses a problem when that star is really bright and you're adding pictures all together, it starts to blow out that star a little bit, so it becomes a little bit challenging to take a picture of if you don't know how to minimize that star. But once you work around it and you've had some experience working with some giant stars, then it shouldn't be much of a problem, so you should be all good. <laughs> we need to get set up and this guy is over here. To <laughs> okay, so now that we got all the science nerdy stuff out of the way, let's just go straight to getting set up and uh, well, hopefully Ryan's ready to get set up too because, you know, we gotta do this. Let's lock in. Let's go. Dude's not dancing to this. <laughs> That's not good. When you watch my videos, this is what I sacrifice. We're, we're sharing this with the world. These were brand, these are these are pro tips. When you see this angle in the video, everyone needs to appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> everyone needs to appreciate this. You heard it from him. You heard it. You heard it. All right, so we just got all of our stuff set up. We have about an hour left of sunlight before it's time to start getting things going. So I'm super excited to see what's gonna be imaged tonight from both of us. Hoping things are good. No clouds in the forecast. Transparency looks great. The seeing looks great, which means the atmosphere is stable, which means our pictures are gonna be tack sharp. So Ryan's doing his thing over there. And uh, yeah, let's just wait till nightfall now. What else we got planned now? Just gotta wait. All right, it is time. Is it, it is time, are we ready? I am so ready. Yeah, we are prepared. Time to open the door and take some pictures. I need to go to the bathroom. So it is nighttime and we are getting ready to focus our telescope. And I've mentioned this on one of my YouTube videos. One of the best ways to focus your telescope is using something called a Batnov mask. And it's this little tiny piece of plastic that is carved into these little lines. And basically what it's supposed to do is when you put this Batnov mask on the front of your telescope, it will show the stars in a little spike cross pattern. And basically it'll show an X and then there'll be a little spike in the middle. And if that spike is in the middle and it is aligned perfectly with the X, then that means that you're in perfect focus. You don't have to worry about anything. So it makes it super easy instead of just manually looking at it with your eyes to make sure that, that star is small enough because sometimes it's not always the most accurate way. So I use a Batnoff mask to focus my telescope and I strongly recommend it. Sneak peek to the Instagram reel. Sneak peek, sneak peek, sneak peek. <laughs> Bro's amount. EQM, EQM be it's like. It's fine. <laughs> it's not fine. It's not fine. <laughs> So all jokes aside, we are finally up and running and imaging the Horsehead Nebula. Oh, oh shoot. no! Oh no! Shoot! Two more seconds. Oh, what? My God. What? 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 And my plan for tonight is shooting about 80, 300 second exposures so I can really maximize the amount of time I get on this target tonight because eventually it sets below some houses. So. 
I have to make sure that everything I get is well worth it because who knows when the next clear night will be. We're still in winter, we kind of got lucky here. The Horsehead Nebula with my new camera compared to last year when I used a stock DSLR will be much better. With a stock DSLR or basically just a regular DSLR camera, they have a filter in front of that camera sensor which basically minimizes the red light you see here. And with a astronomy camera or a dedicated astronomy camera, you will get reduced noise which will means your pictures will come out a lot smoother and you also get all the red light that you see here. So you're really maximizing that amount of red color in there or in this case, the hydrogen alpha. So this year, I am pretty sure that my image will be much cleaner than last year and I will definitely be able to grab more details and that's something that I'm super excited about. All right, he's calling the owls now. Calling the owls. We have two great horn owls. If you've been on this channel, you would know that. Can't really see them. Oh man, it is cold out here. It is currently 12.11 and we have about 20 minutes left to image the Horsehead Nebula before I switch things over to the Pinwheel Galaxy. I'm gathering some hydrogen alpha data on this tonight because I don't want the rest of the night to go to waste after Orion sets. So, well, I know this has been a- I didn't get that. Could you try again? <sighs> Of course, Siri's talking to me during this. I don't know. So without further ado, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was pretty fun to make. There are a lot of crazy moments today. A lot of times where I would just burst out laughing, and I hope you guys laughed at some of the moments here that I put in this video too. So I wanna thank you guys all for watching and clear skies, everybody. And I seriously wish clear skies during this time of season because it's rough, but there are better days coming. ready for the second it's, it's the second exposure. second exposure second exposure are Two, you ready one oh! <laughs> no way